no day Guan no day Guan no dan ha hi Guan na li a guan no dan ha hi Guan na li a guan no dan ha hi Guan na li a guan no day Guan na li a guan no day Nalia guano da e ego e gande ego e gana guanalia guano dana e guanalia guano dana e Guanalia guano de Guanalia guano de Guanalia guano da e de yoka de yoka de yoka de yoka Guanalia guano dana hi Guanalia guano dana hi Guanalia guano de Guanalia guano de Guanalia guano da Que me dava loktiok, nin gadlanan maltai, weligiskok. Hello, my name is Catherine Martin, and I'd like to welcome all of you to this beautiful day. And in keeping with the tradition of my ancestors, I'd like to also welcome you to the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, the Olnu of this land. We have always lived here for over 14,000 years and we shall continue to live on, on our land. And in 1752, our ancestors signed an agreement with the new immigrants, the British, to have peace and friendship together and to promise that the, they would respect our way of life and to let us continue to live the way we have lived for the 14,000 or so years that we've been here and in peace and friendship. So uh, when I sang my chant, Guanu Day, it's a gathering chant or a feast chant. And the feast chant is sung at celebrations, at gatherings, at uh, times of sadness. We sing to, um, you know, to bring our, um, ourselves as one to get the work done or do the things that we want to do and accomplish by coming together with one heartbeat. So at this point, it's almost midwinter feast for our, um, for the Mi'kmaq and many indigenous peoples. So early in February, we gather in different places to celebrate, to do ceremony and to thank mother earth, grandmother moon and the creator for allowing us to be able to survive this far halfway through the winter and to pray and, and ask for um, help to make sure that we can get through the rest of the winter and survive and be able to feed our families. So a midwinter feast is also a time for us to get together and share, share how we're doing and talk about the things that are most important to us. So it's a very timely time for you to come together to do that very thing, to come together and share and, and talk and, and build relationships. Emsit Nogama Walaliyo. Oh 
Jumbo, Buona, greetings friends. Welcome everyone. Please turn off your cell phones as we begin the ceremony. Thank you. Libation is offered to our ancestors as a convocation for auspicious occasions. For people of African descent, our ancestors are the focus of respect. The offering of libation involves the pouring of liquid, which can be water or wine, on the ground in a special pattern which honor is paid to the ancestors. An African proverb tells us that people who lack knowledge of their past are like a tree without roots. So in the spirit of remembrance, we pour libation. As I pour libation, I will say ashe and ask the audience to repeat it. Let's practice once. Ashe. Ashe. So we pour to honor the past so that we may learn from it. We pour to honor the importance of family. We raise our cup to show God our reverence for the optional source of our lives. We use water as a symbol of the flow of life to clean and nourish our body and soul. Ashe. Ashe. It is said that through others, we broaden our circle, remember our heritage, and recall those who gave us life. We call upon our ancestors, our mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers, our fathers, grandfathers, and our great-grandfathers, uncles, aunts, and cousins, the foundations of our families immortalized in our thoughts. Ashe. Ashe. We call upon our elders, whose wisdom we seek, our friends, whom we are blessed to have in our lives, our parents who guided us along the road to adulthood. We call upon family who have passed over, or who could not be here today. We honor our children because children give glory to our homes. Ashe. Ashe. Therefore, we cast our libation to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. We pour for the motherland, cradle of civilization, for the ancestors in their indomitable spirit, for the elders from whom we can learn much, for our youth who represent the promise for tomorrow, for our people, the original people, for our struggle and in remembrance of those who have struggled on our behalf, for Uboja, the principle of unity, which should guide us in all that we do, for the creator who guide provides all things great and small. Ashe. Ashe. We call upon our ancestors far and near, fathers of our fathers, mothers of our mothers, to bear witness to what we have done, and by their example to continue to inspire us to where reclaiming our African minds and regenerating our African spirit. We pour this libation to bring into our midst their venerable African spirit, seeking their great wisdom courage. The libation is to honor our ancestors, our children, and their children's children yet to be born. Ashe. Ashe. For our esteemed ancestors who laid the foundation for human civilization and who provided the wisdom by which we live and the models by which we live our lives today, we are guided. For our esteemed ancestors who have suffered the atrocities and horrors of Mafa, the African Holocaust, and yet demonstrated power of the African spirit against adversity by maintaining their dignity no matter the cost. We pour libation. Ashe. Ashe. And for those ancestors who survived and made it possible for us to be here today, to continue with the struggle for African liberation and unity, we pour our libation. Ashe. Ashe. And at this time, I ask you to call on your ancestors, your strengths, and your communities that have held you up during these times. I call on Rosella Sparks, Eula Mae Hamilton, Reginald Hamilton, James Bundy, Bernice McLaughlin, Rocky Jones, Norman Hamilton, W.P. Oliver, Perline Oliver, communities of Beachville, Cherry Brook, Lake Bloom, Upper Hammonds Plains, North Preston, Guysboro, Lincolnville, Yarmouth, Cape Breton. We call upon all of our communities and all of our ancestors. Ashe. Ashe. And finally, for our children and their children and future generations of Africans to come, that they too, in their time, will imprint upon the world the great genius, 
genius of African humanity. We pour a libation. Ashe. Ashe. May their venerable African spirit grace this occasion to reaffirm our African connections. Ashe. Ashe. It is done. Hello, my name is Deep Sani, and I am the President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University. It is my honor to join you to recognize and celebrate the start of African Heritage Month with this virtual flag raising and launch. While I wish we were able to mark this occasion together in person as we normally would, it is more important than ever to reaffirm Dalhousie's commitment to supporting our people of African descent in our community. The theme of African Heritage Month at Dalhousie this year is Black Health Matters. Listen, learn, share, and act. As we reflect on black health and wellness, I want to acknowledge what an incredibly difficult time in our history this year has been as we respond to the unjust racial tragedies experienced by black people in North America and on a global scale, like health inequities, police brutality, and environmental racism, and the impact these injustices have within our own community. At Dalhousie, we have strong policies, several established initiatives, and resources to support our community, as well as students, faculty, and staff who make vital contributions by understanding inequities and making change. That being said, we know we must do more. We must all be accountable and drive for continuous improvement. There remains tremendous action we still must take to combat systemic anti-black racism and all forms of discrimination and intolerance. Dalhousie is fully committed to doing more. On behalf of Dalhousie University, I would like to thank the African Heritage Month Planning Committee for coordinating this virtual flag raising ceremony. I hope you will join me in using this month to learn, reflect, and take action. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Madeline Stinson. I'm the Dalhousie Student Union President, and it is with great respect and sincere admiration that I am able to speak on behalf of the Dalhousie Student Union at today's events. The celebration of African History Month in Nova Scotia is a reminder to all students of the rich and vibrant history of Black individuals in our province and what it means to be a part of the Dalhousie community. Dalhousie's theme for this year's African Heritage Month, Black Health Matters, is a chance for us to recognize the leadership, courage, and endless dedication of Black community members during an especially challenging year. I want to acknowledge and thank those individuals for their contribution to the Black student experience here at Dalhousie. Those like Dr. Kevin Hewitt, Dr. Ivan Joseph, Dr. Ami Sor Dryden, Ingrid Waldron, and countless others who work tirelessly and selflessly to build a better present and future for our Black students. As a student, it can be exhausting to have to call out inequalities and inappropriate actions while also bearing the weight of pursuing an education. These leaders have reduced some of that weight by paving the way and changing what it means to be part of this academic community. They have made Dalhousie a safer place for the next generation of Black scholars, leaders, and innovators. Our Black students are no less remarkable and have time and time again been leaders and change makers on and off our campuses. While they are here and after they leave us, Black students at Dalhousie have made waves and transcended boundaries. Whether as the law graduates and the first Black lawyer in Nova Scotia, community leaders, or as individuals that take each day as an opportunity to make the world better for themselves and others. These students are the reason that we do what we do. Their mental, physical, social, spiritual, emotional, and intellectual health must continue to be a priority. The challenges that Black students face on this campus are a clear indicator that inequality and anti-Black racism are still present in our community, a fact that is not often given proper recognition. These barriers to success are especially impactful to our Black students who hold intersectional identities, as well as those who are a part of the African Nova Scotian and Mi'kmaq communities. We must always remember that the health of our Black students is a direct reflection of the health of our entire community. The impact of this year has shown us, perhaps more than any other time for a 20-something living in Nova Scotia, that health is directly tied to the way in which we interact with the environment around us. Through 2021 and the years to come, these lessons learned cannot be forgotten. This community of students, staff, and faculty 
leaves me hopeful for a future, a future in which equity is the quintessential factor. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joy Chikwe. I'm a first year master's of Kinsu and here at Dow. Uh, growing up, I played like every single sport you can think of from basketball to golf to ultimate frisbee. I just love movement. And I was fortunate enough to play basketball at um, Katie University for a couple of years. And during that time, I was really taught and I understood the importance of physical activity and exercise. Um, through life. Uh, as a kinesiology student there, we were fortunate enough to pair with the community and work with their older, popu their older adult population as well as populations living with chronic diseases or having some type of uh, limitation. We were really taught to use exercise as a form of medicine and as well as using movement to improve someone's quality of life. During that time, I also was able to work with athletes, so I understood how exercise as well as physical activity could make or break someone's career. When I graduated, I became an exercise physiologist, and in short, my job is to use exercise as a form of medicine in the clinical population to improve quality of life. So my goal was to work with those clinical populations to teach them and give them the tools to be active on their own to minimize or, or manage their comorbidity or health condition that they're living with. When I graduated, I got really lucky and I got to work with, or I still am working with, Dr. Melanie Keats and Dr. Scott Grandy in our lab where we have an exercise program called Access for cancer patients and survivors. So during this time, I really got to see the importance of physical activity and exercise as you age, as well as as you're dealing with a Crohn disease. As well as when I was at Acadia, I got to see firsthand how physical activity um, could, change, could change a 72 year old versus another 72 year old who was active their whole life and who was not active in life. So that I really got a good understanding of it and that's something I try to think about every single day. So as a student now, there are so many stretches, stressors that come with it. So just like your assignments, your, your uh, readings, your presentations, you name it, just being a student has a stressor right beside it. And so for me, now that I'm older, I know that I need to prioritize a physical activity and exercise. Um, and that could just mean, for me, it could mean going to the gym, it can mean going for a run, it can mean going for a bike ride, but it also means maybe I just go outside for two minutes and go for a little walk, or maybe I do a mobility flow. And that's the beauty of health and wellness and fitness. It's a spectrum. So again, so for one person, it might be running a marathon every day, and some person just might be getting up from their seat, and that's okay. The, the main point about physical activity and exercise is getting your body moving and showing it the love it deserves so you can perform at the level you your body is supposed to perform for as long as it can, especially through, throughout aging, and as well as the, the hard reality of if we are faced with a disease. So as an exercise physiologist, again, my job is to use exercise as a form of medicine to tell people and show people how physical activity and exercise will impact their life long run. And that being able to decrease our sitting time, we can improve our overall quality of life, improve our health as we age, and as well as maintain independence for as long as we can throughout our whole life. So my goal for you guys is to, when you're sitting down at home, even right now, is to get up every, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes, do three squats or whatever it is, just get moving, and you'll thank me in the long run. Have a great day. African Heritage Month begins on Monday, February 1st. I am Teresa Ray Jack Talley, and as Dalhousie's Vice Provost for Equity and Inclusion, I bring greetings and would like to encourage everyone to use this month to celebrate and to reflect, to engage in events, programming, and learning on our campus and in our broader community, including in our virtual flag raising ceremony on Monday, February 1st from 12 to 1 p.m. This year, in the face of many challenges, including those posed by the current pandemic, we celebrate the health, vibrancy, and legacies of people of African descent. Through this year's theme, Black Health Matters, listen, learn, share, and act, we are urged to not only recognize barriers, but to actively work to remove them. Each year, as part of our celebrations of African Heritage Month and our commitment to building and recognizing the community in which Dalhousie is part of, we give African Heritage Awards to community organizations that reflect the spirit and the work of the themes selected in the given year. I am deeply humbled and honored 
to virtually present this award to five outstanding awardees. I will read their brief bios in no particular order of importance. Congratulations goes out to the Health Association of African Canadians, or HAC. The Health Association of African Canadians is a resilient and committed organization. It is the only solely health-focused African-Canadian organization in the province. Established in 2000, HAC's mandate remains to address health system issues and their impact on African-Canadians. This includes the representation of African Nova Scotians in the health professions, public education, black health research, healthcare service delivery and policy reform all within a cultural competence framework. HAC's vision is thriving healthy African Canadian communities in Nova Scotia and the mission is to promote and improve the health of African Canadians in Nova Scotia through community engagement, education, policy recommendations, partnership and research participation. Our second award is Game Changers 902. Game Changers 902 is a new group formed by Kate McDonnell, Derrico Simmons, and Trayvon Clayton. The organization works to counteract racial inequalities with the aim of creating a balanced and equitable approach in the game of life for marginalized people. Ever since an incident of racism occurred while they were invited to visit Parliament Hill, these three young black activists have been working behind and in front of the scenes calling out racism. More recently, they have been at the front line of the Black Lives Matter movement and protests in Nova Scotia. Congratulations to our next awardee, ACE. ACCE is an organization made up of young African Nova Scotian professionals, entrepreneurs, artists, politicians, and community activists. The name represents what they support, arts, community, culture and economics, all key pillars in the livelihoods of African Nova Scotia. In March 2020, ACE established the Preston Township Emergency Impact and Response Team to mobilize the community as a result of the spread of COVID-19 in Nova Scotia and specifically the Preston Township. In June 2020, the group launched a highly successful campaign aimed at promoting local businesses in Halifax. Congratulations to the Black Wellness Cooperative Nova Scotia. The Black Wellness Cooperative Nova Scotia is made up of black health and wellness professionals in Nova Scotia that are committed to providing their expertise, knowledge and training to underserved communities. Our fifth and final awardee is the Northwood staff of African descent. Northwood is the largest not-for-profit continuing care organization east of Montreal. Staff of African descent working with Northwood in various capacities have provided incredible contributions to the organizations and residents for many decades. The positive impact of the very hard work on our communities during this challenging year should not go unnoticed. It is important to acknowledge healthcare workers on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis because we know that their work isn't often celebrated as it should be. Congratulations to all our awardees on behalf of Dalhousie and thank you for your service to the community.